Welcome back to River Cottage, everybody. And now we have the fun and wholly positive part of today's proceedings as we celebrate the Peas Please Awards 2021. This bit's all about you and what you've achieved over the last year, turning those great Peas Please pledges into vegetable reality. Peas Please brings you all together, retailers, caterers, restaurants, manufacturers and more, to make it easier to get more veg to more people. Pledges have already sold or served a staggering extra 162 million portions of veg in the last three years. But we want to see 3 billion additional portions served by the end of 2023. And there are real prizes for these awards. Some of them are edible. All the runners up will be receiving a fantastic veg box from our friends at Riverford Farm. And all the winners will be receiving a pair of books, a River Cottage book and one of mine, which I hope they will find useful. Now, the first category in the Peas Please Awards 2021 is for innovation. This recognises inspiring and innovative activities to support organisational pledges and our overall mission of boosting veg consumption. And the runner-up this year is Aldi for their Project Fresh. Aldi's redesigned its store format with one key change to promote fresh produce to customers at the very start of their shopping journey. The new format is the default for all new Aldi stores and all current stalls are being refitted. And the winner is Compass for Plantilicious. Compass Group launched their plant forward range, Plantilicious, into their business, industry, colleges, universities and healthcare sites in January 2020. The Plantilicious range ensures vegetables make up at least two portions of every Plantilicious plate. Congratulations to Compass and I've got Charlotte Cool with me. Charlotte, thousands of locations. This is a big rollout for Compass. Tell me all about it. Yeah, we're in 6,000 locations. Uh, so we're delighted that actually we've done so well during a difficult year, COVID, and there's so much more to come. So, that, you, so despite COVID, you managed to deliver your plant delicious plan across a huge section of the business? We did. It's been a, an amazing period of innovation, actually. That was one of the sort of unintended uh, positive, pot of positive outcomes for us. So lots of innovation, lots of new menu ranges, and actually 10% more vegetables in a year where a lot of the business was shut. 10% more veg. I was going to ask you if you could put a number on the number of portions of extra veg you serve, but 10% uplift yes. is, is great. Many congratulations. I've got Thank you. A, a little prize for you. Um, a couple of my books, as oh, it happens. Well, that's amazing. Uh, which I've signed. They're, Fantastic. They're, they're, they're two of my healthier books. Thank you so much. And look, can I just dedicate this to all our colleagues, tens of thousands of colleagues at Compass who have been keeping essential services going during the pandemic. The next Peas Please prize is the Good Society Award. This recognises Pledge's efforts to decrease inequalities in accessing veg, especially in areas particularly relevant to Peas Please, like school food, Healthy Start and agricultural initiatives. And the runner-up for the Good Society Prize this year is Lantra, which updated the Wales Industry Action Plan for Horticulture. And the winner is Tesco, Tesco were the first Peas Please pledger to add one pound onto the Healthy Start voucher scheme, which provides money for fruit and veg and other essentials to beneficiaries across all of the four nations. Tesco's Sarah Bradbury is with me right here. Sarah, what difference do you think you've made by doing this? It was crucially important to us to help people who need it most, especially through the pandemic, when we heard how difficult people were finding it. So moving to help people to add an extra pound to their fruit and veg shopping, we thought was really important through this very, very difficult year. And that was a nationwide pledge to everyone on the, the Healthy Start. Yes, absolutely. And we thought that this was something that as the biggest retailer, it was something that we wanted to support with. Well, that must have made a big difference to, to many people's lives in the last year. So well done and congratulations. And I have uh, a little something for you here to, to take away. You could share that with any of that with your development chefs. Thank you very much. I'm sure they'd really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thank you. Moving on now. And it's the Vegometer Prize. That recognises the biggest percentage increase in vegetable portions sold or served by our pledges between 2018-19 and 
and the 2019-20 reporting cycles. And the runner-up is Veg Cities. Veg Cities together have increased the number of veg sold or served between all the groups by 597.8%. Now you'd think that would be impossible to beat, but astonishingly, our winner is Cardiff and Vale University Health Board with a staggering increase of 701.7% from just one site. Uh, I've got Stephanie from Cardiff and Vale with me now on Zoom. Stephanie, that's an incredible achievement. How are you all feeling about that? Yeah, we're very, very proud of, uh, of that. And we're, you know, we're very, very happy um, to receive this award and, you know, carry on doing what we're doing at the moment. And do you think the food that you're serving as well as getting healthier with more veg, has it also got more delicious too? Definitely. Uh, we're constantly getting compliments from uh, the staff and visitors the, that, um, that visit our restaurants and our Aroma Coffee Shop units. Um, so yeah, it's definitely getting tastier. It's constantly being experimented with, um, the different veg that we're experimenting with as well. Um, so yeah, definitely getting better and definitely getting tastier. Brilliant, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, I've got a prize for you here. It's going to go in the post. It will arrive with you there sometime soon. So I hope you all enjoy it. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for talking to us. And congratulations. I imagine 701.7%. You might not manage to have a similar increase next year, uh, not without having plant-only menus on all of your menus. We will, we will try our best and we will continue in to, to improve our standards across all sites, not just the one um, at UHW. Great, and thank you for flying the flag for Peace Please. Great work. Thank you very much. Diolch Bauer. The next prize recognises the new and energetic Peace Please pledges who've made the biggest difference with really significant and ambitious pledges to get us eating more veg. This is the Rising Star Prize. And shortlisted for this is Zizis, who have pledged to ensure that all children's meals include two portions of veg. Last year was their first time taking part in the Peace Please monitoring cycle and even with the impacts of COVID-19, they reported an increase of veg portions sold of 167.6%. That's our runner-up, Zizis. And the winner is the University of Edinburgh. The university has pledged to serve more veg across their catering service by adding more servings to pre-prepared grab-and-go items doubling the number of veg side serving options in their retail outlets. They've set smart targets to implement all this by June 2023. And with me on the screen here is Ian from the University of Edinburgh. Congratulations, Ian. How did you pull off such a momentous feat during such tricky times? Well, Hugh, thanks very much. It was a great achievement for the team all round and a very pleasant surprise to uh, have been uh, awarded the Rising Star. Um, which we put our pledge in in uh, January 2020, just before this uh, interesting year we've had. Um, we've, we've really kind of progressed well. We've been fortunate on the basis that we had a lot of students back. We were able to operate our catered halls, um, not at our usual 2,000 uh, students a year, more like a sort of 1,200. So we are able to look at our um, consumption of edge and meet our pledge in those areas. It would have been nice to have more of the cafes open, but hopefully we'll get some recovery of that come uh, August, September, and we can get those back open. But, but certainly in even a silver lining and a cloud, et cetera, for isolation support, we were supporting upwards of uh, 800 students at one peak in isolation with uh, meal and grocery boxes, fruit bags, um, and uh, a further 1,000 in self-catering. So Cater Hall self-catering, 1,800 in isolation at one stage this year. Wow. Uh, so a, a strange turn of events after you made your pledge, but you're well on track to implement what you said you were going to do by June 2023. Very much so. And it seemed a natural synergy to commit to the Peace Please pledge as we've had a good food policy since 2016. And one of our uh, pillars as such is uh, very much around practice. And we're actively um, increasing the amount of uh, vegetarian and vegan options across the estate, which we've managed to maintain at 50 percent throughout this current year and hopefully that will uh, continue to grow. Well one of the students you may have been supporting is my nephew who's at the university so I'm delighted to hear that uh, he might be having an extra portion or two of veg uh, when he eats at the university outlets. 
Ian, thank you very much for being with us and congratulations. And we look forward to seeing you nail that target a couple of years from now. That's great. Thank you very much, Hugh. And now for our Pledger Champion. This is for those who've effectively championed and implemented their Peas Please pledges across their organisation as a core part of their business proposition. For example, including them in their company reporting. And the runner-up is Henderson Group Spa, Northern Ireland. Henderson Group Spa have gone beyond their original pledge to increase veg sales by 5% year on year and take a really joined up approach across all parts of the business to make this a reality. And the winner, our actual pledger champion, is Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's have discounted a range of fruit and vegetables to 60p to encourage customers to try new veg and to buy more veg. They've also encouraged customers via their great big fruit and veg challenge, which is personalised to each Nectar customer and rewards them for increasing the portions of fruit and veg they buy. It's a lovely example of using tech and a bit of gamification to increase the sales of veg. And I have Nilani from Sainsbury's with me now. Uh, this is a cunning scheme, you know, a, a nice bit of blue sky thinking. Uh, it's really worked, has it? Yeah, I mean, we, we saw it. It was very successful. We had about 450,000 participants and we saw that veg actually increased by about 12 percent in customers that took part. So on average, uh, those customers were taking home an extra three and a half portions of veg each week. Uh, which is fantastic. And actually what was brilliant about it, we did some work with uh, the Leeds Institute of Data Analytics. And um, when they evaluated it, they said that actually they found that veg consumption up to six weeks post intervention um, was still raised versus before the actual challenge. So it's certainly having a, a longer term impact as well, which is really great. So this was actually boosting families intake of veg and getting it up to a level which hopefully they've run with and is actually making a difference to their lives and their health. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're actually running it again. So we've learned a lot from, from that challenge last year, last September. So it's actually in the market at the moment. So I'm going to make a quick plug for that. So if you want to get involved, log into the, the next wrap. Absolutely, and plug up. away. You're, you you're the champion, so you're entitled to plug. I, mean, I think we can say that. <laughs> Thank you. Especially, <laughs> especially for such a worthwhile thing. And I'm very glad to, to hear that you're running it again, and long may it continue, because you know, these things are a one-off great, but if you're doing it again, it's going to make a difference and keep going. Yeah. So keep up the great work, and nice yeah. talking to you. Thank you. Well, we hope we've learned from it, and we've got a lot more you know, interesting things coming up as part of the, the new app. So, yeah, please do get involved if, if you can. I think it's a fantastic way to gamify eating more veg. Brilliant. Please pass the congratulations on to your Sainsbury's colleagues. Now we come to the Individual Champion Award. And this is for an outstanding contribution made by an individual showing leadership in the implementation of their organisation's Peas Please pledges. And the runner-up uh, in the Individual Champion Award is Charlotte Newman from Havering Catering. Charlotte took the initiative to strengthen Havering's previous pledge by recruiting an additional six schools to take part in Peas Please and set a target for each of them to increase their veg served by 10%. So well done, Charlotte. And our winner, our individual champion for Peas Please this year, is Amanda Watley from HC3S. Amanda's support for Peas Please and Veg Power has been invaluable especially during this year's Peas Please monitoring cycle. She went the extra mile to get the correct data and submit it in time, ensuring that we had the most accurate data available. It's also been great to have Amanda sharing the amazing work that HC3S are doing on Peas Please, Veg Power and Food Foundation webinars. I have Amanda with me on the screen now. Amanda, you've got really involved with Peas Please. You've, you've taken up the challenge and run with it. You've gone further than anybody else. Um, this is actually, monitoring's really important because all these Peas Please pledges don't mean anything unless they actually happen. So you've put in the extra time. What difference do you think it's made? It's made a huge difference because if you've got the data to support what you're doing, you can pinpoint what's working, um, how effective it is. And then you know what needs to be worked on for the future, you know, what's performing well so that we can make long term decisions for the future success of children's health and well-being um, in the schools in which we work um, so that they ultimately flourish going forward if they're eating the right nutritious, freshly cooked school lunches. You're right. It's absolutely crucial because if you if you haven't got the data, 
you can't show the effect. And also when it comes to those big conversations like we've been having earlier today with big business and government, that, that you know, we might be onto something, have a look at this, uh, the data tells the story. So the work that you do goes way beyond the schools you're supporting and will help Peas Please and Veg Power uh, and the Food Foundation do more of their amazing work. Uh, what's next? Any other? I mean, can you top that for the year to come? Well, we're in week two of the current Veg Power Eat Them to Defeat Them campaign, which is uh, going phenomenally well. And we'll continue to support that and their seasonal veg uh, activities through the year. Um, it, it, for us, you know, it's also about um, what we put on our menus, um, looking at more plant based options. So there's lots of work going on behind the scenes, which we can then um, take and um, convey to all of our different parents in different demographics as well as all of our school clients so that they understand the importance of keeping this going through the year not just um, during six weeks. I can't help asking you this question because I've been a little bit involved myself but do you think the new Veg Power Eat Them to Defeat Them ad is having an effect? Are the kids enjoying it? Definitely. I visited a school last week and um, spoke to a whole um, group of year old children, reception children and virtually all of them had seen it, they understood what it meant, and they were really interested in eating more veg. So immediately, even before the campaign's fully underway, it's having an effect. Great. And if you want to tap me up for any extra veggie recipes during the seasonal veg campaign, just drop me a line, I'll, I'll sort that out. That would be amazing, thank you so much. Lovely talking to you and many congratulations. Thank you ever so much, it's really an honour and um, totally unexpected. Well, we've very nearly reached our last prize of the day. But before we come to that, we've got a short video that we're delighted to share with you all. This is the very first time it's been screened today. And it's introducing the Veg Advocate programme and showing what they're all about. The Peas Please team filmed some of their Veg Advocates out and about in Brighton. Check this out. The Veg Advocate programme is about engaging citizens in the mission of Peas Please and Peas Please mission is about getting the whole country eating more veg but not just by telling people to eat more veg, about, it's about making it more available, more accessible, more interesting. So this year we have them engaging with some of our Peas Please pledges um, and one of the Peas Please pledges is Brighton & Hove Food Partnership who do some fantastic work on veg cities. So our veg advocates today came and saw the wonderful community garden that was set up we have this space because we want people to be able to see what it means to grow veg. So it's a really, really visible, um, lots of people walking past right in the heart of the city. Our veg advocates come from across the UK and them coming together and just talking about some of the fantastic work they've been doing is already leading to new work. The Veg Advocates programme is, is so um, exciting because it focuses so much on that food environment and making it um, easier for people to access veg. So far it's been really good to meet other people all over the country who are all involved in food projects or growing projects. And what's really interesting about this community is that we can all exchange ideas in different parts of the country and learn from each other. Today they were having a, an experience of what a community lesson would be like around life skills, around chopping veg, because we also have a, a sort of new idea that we're working with, which is around taking the surplus surplus, so it's the veg that cannot be got out quick enough because it's really short date, and actually dehydrating it to extend life to make like little soup and stew packs. So I'm here at Stammer Park, this is Fork and Dig It. Uh, where they're uh, harvesting vegetables today to send out to 40 families in the area and um, I'm just coming to see what they're doing and get involved. I think the easiest way to put it is Soil Soul Society. Those three words really sum it up because it's about reconnecting people to their food, reconnecting people to nature and nature's cycles and giving people access to land. So, so far the uh, pledges have contributed another 162 million portions of veg during the first few years of Peas Please to, to consumption. But our target is for 3 billion more portions uh, eaten by the end of the Peas Please programme. So we have a massive task ahead of us and we realise we need as much help as possible and our veg advocates is part of that. We've got our very own veg advocate with us today, Olivia from Totnes. 
Hello. Olivia, what made you want to become a veg advocate? And indeed, what is a veg ad advocate? What have you been up to? Well, um, loads of reasons, really, because um, I'm a nutritionist and I'm also a mum. Um, and I think that we all need to do our bit to affect change. And I really believe that Peas Please and also the Food Foundation are making a difference. So what I've been doing as a veg advocate is trying to get the message out there that we need to get more veg into school meals, mm. um, more veg into our, our manufacturers using more veg. Um, and I've just been working along with the Food Foundation on all their various campaigns. And does that mean you are getting noisy locally, getting the support of other mums and other families and talking specifically to your school and other schools? And yes, so I've been into my, my children's primary school um, and also I've talked to other mums a lot about their school meals um, and I'm getting them more interested. And I think that by talking to other mums about it, we are going to slowly start making a difference. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, now, you were actually involved in judging this award today, so I'm going to come back to you on that in just a second. Okay. The Veg Cities programme recognises integrated local approaches to increasing veg uptake for cities participating in the campaign. This year, we focused on those veg cities who really stepped up and went the extra mile during the peak of COVID-19, making sure that their pledges to increase veg consumption and to reach the people of their cities were met as far as was possible in those challenging circumstances. And the runner-up for Veg City of the Year is Hull. Well done, Hull. Great effort. You should be very proud. Now, Olivia, you were involved in choosing this year's winner. Don't tell me who it is just yet, but okay. do tell me uh, what was it they did that made them the winner? Why have they won this prize? Well, um, firstly, all the entries were really impressive, but this one in particular um, impressed me and others with the community engagement. It really stood out, and the case studies of local people getting involved were really outstanding. Well, that's brilliant to hear. So, final drum roll. The veg city that did all these brilliant things that Olivia's told us about and is the winner, this year's veg city is Cardiff. And I have Pearl Costello in Cardiff on the screen. Pearl, congratulations. Tell us about what you got up to in Cardiff, particularly how you responded to the challenges of the pandemic. Thanks so much, Hugh, and thanks to Olivia and all the advocates who got involved in, in voting for us. Um, Cardiff was one of the first veg cities. We helped um, develop the programme. And over the last few years, we've had hundreds of thousands of extra portions of veg served through it. But during the pandemic, we really ramped up our efforts to get Cardiff growing their own food. Um, so it was really incredible the amount of groups who came together across the city, firstly through a project called Cardiff Growing Together, and then through the Good Food Cardiff Autumn Festival to distribute 20,000 veggie plants, seed kits, growing packs to families and households in Cardiff. Wow. So a lot of it was about growing your own this year. That was a big part of responding to the pandemic was to get people, uh, and I gather that people were doing container gardens, they were digging up their own flower beds and doing everything to just grow a bit of extra veg. Yeah, we saw it at all scales, whether it was, like you say, in people's windowsills, in people's gardens, on allotments or community sites, even commercially as well. The city went through a food growing revolution and we found that about 75% of people or more who took part had never grown anything before either. So we're really excited to see how many people got growing. No, I love that. You know, growing your own veg is the one of the biggest commitments you can make to having more veg in your life. And it, it's what we, it's, it's our great pride and joy to have a, a veg garden here at River Cottage. But back at the beginning, when the, when the pandemic, when it became clear it was going to make life very difficult, did you think that was the, the kibosh on the whole veg city plan? I mean, how quickly did you ha rethink and, and come up with your, with your bold new strategies? We knew originally that we wanted to do a bit around growing as part of our Veg Cities plan, but we had other projects as well. Um, but we found that was really where the momentum was, where the appetite was. And yeah, a few other things went by the wayside, but that was worth it for the amount of um, success we've had with the growing. Well, it's an incredibly inspiring story and you are fantastically worthy winners. And well done, Pearl, and well done the whole of Cardiff. Will you, will you pass... Our congratulations on to, to everyone who grew veg in Cardiff and beyond. Thanks so much. I can't think of a more inspiring winner and a more brilliant story 
uh, to bring us to a close. Uh, but I can think of a rather corny and yet somehow irresistible uh, song that has kind of become the anthem of Peace Please. So I hope you've enjoyed the prize giving. I hope you've celebrated with us the fantastic achievements of the Peace Please winners today. And here we go with the Peace Please song. Peace. 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 We are peace. 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 We are peace. Lovely taste of peace. We are peace. 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 We are peace. Give me peace, pretty please.